All right, so I'm back. Woo. Yeah, it's hot. Okay, so now, yes, the key members, the key members are gone. Pastor Glover is gone. Mother Wilson, which is my grandmother, is gone. My aunt, I don't know, that's Pastor Glover, that's my aunt. And Bishop Mingo. Does the church feel like home to you anymore? No. To be honest, no. And, and, and depending on what you mean by home, it never really felt like home. Once Bishop Mingo died out, died and left, Bishop Mingo left. I mean, my grandmother left. It never felt like home. And let me explain what home is to me. Home is before they died, I could come to church and be Sharon. I could be a sinner and come to church. And I didn't have to hear about what I did as a sinner to be heard in the church. I could come to church anytime I wanted to come. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about service starting at 11 and I come at 1 and it's okay. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not even talking about when I say anytime, meaning that whenever I felt like I wanted to go to church, I can go to church and church was there. You see what I'm saying? Uh, 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 I felt... Oh, let me see. How can I say? I want to make sure I say it right so you understand what I mean when I say home. It's not like home anymore. Uh, I guess in the all perspective is that family is gone. There's nobody in my family that's saved but me. Pastor Glover was the only and last one. So that makes it hard for me, not so much to live saved because I'm living for myself, but it's hard to keep going to church now that Pastor Glover is gone because she was the only family member that was saved. That I may have went out and backslidden, but when I come back, I had a family member to look up to. You see what I'm saying? Regardless of what the situation was or what was going down at the time or even between us, she still was the family member, the saved family member that I looked up to. I had other family members. I had Uncle David. He was gone. He left the church. I had Sammy. He was gone. He left the church. Mother Giles, she died out. You see what I'm saying? You know, it wasn't really that many family members that was in House of Prayer. But there was a lot of family members that came to House of Prayer. See, a lot of, a lot of the people that was in House of Prayer was just like our title that God gave to Bishop Mingo, Pentecostal Rescue House of Prayer. Those are a lot of people that God brought in that Bishop Mingo, through God, rescued from sin. So, we I went to church. We had church. You see what I'm saying? We had church. We It wasn't so much time to pay attention to what people were or weren't doing. The only thing that they was concerned about that made me concerned was my soul. They was concerned about the souls and I was concerned about mine. Right? So the times that I was out of the church when Bishop Mingo was bishop, it was just me being me. It was nothing that went down. It was just like me being in the Bronx now, being saved, I just didn't go to church. It wasn't so much as so much was happening. It wasn't that I couldn't do this or I could do this or somebody else was doing this or somebody should be doing this. It, it wasn't even all of that. It was things that I was going through in my life, which I will put in that other video about how I became to my self-security. So good, I have to I have to start with this video and then go to me. So 
Bishop Mingle was there. Mother Wilson was there. Mother Giles was there. You see what I'm saying? We had a church full of people. We had a church full of young people. You have to understand that it's hard to relate to people that is outside of your age group. And then not to be open-minded. So Bishop Mingo, she I got to say she was open-minded, but she didn't too much have to place herself in situations with young people because there was young people to do it. She allowed Mother Giles to be over the young people. When other people came in, it was okay. You could be over the young people. Even me, I was over them for a little bit when she was alive. Excuse me. You know, people would come to me and have me go to her if there were certain things that they wanted to know about or wanted to do. You see? I went to her, asked her about bracelets and stuff, and she was like, let me think about it. Let me, let me come back to me on that one. And we'll wait a while. And then I come back to her and she let me know. She would just give me the bracelet and go ahead and wear it. You know, it, and, and that's what I went with. I didn't question her and ask her nothing because I felt that she knew what was right for my life. Mommy was my up, upbringer. She was my upbringer. I had no parents. Yeah, my parents was alive, but I didn't have none. So she was there instructing me on things to do as far as life was concerned as far as the spiritual life was concerned they was teaching me that they didn't have all the time okay when you see this person doing this this is what you do if you see this person wearing pants you don't be bothered with them if you hear this person cursing you don't be they didn't have i mean don't get me wrong i'm, I'm not saying that they was cool with that what I'm saying is that those things wasn't important to them for me to know what was important to them for me to know besides the fundamentals of life was salvation so they gave me just like God gives us that lead way to make our own decisions to live our lives the way he wanted the way we want to live it then he gives us the option to pick him. And if we pick him, then we will see that our lives will be different. Different. We'll be able to handle the things of this world because we got him. But unless we choose him, we're going to try to handle the things. And some of the things we may handle, but there will be some things that will overwhelm us that we won't be able to handle that we're going to need him. So that's, that's how it was. I went on trying to handle things based on what I thought I knew. But in the long run, I had to wind up coming back to him. And that's just like I said in the earlier video. Chosen. When you chosen, you can only handle certain things on your own before you decide and realize that you got to go back to him because you chose him. And no matter how far I went out, I had to come back to him. He told me, all right, it's time for you to come back. Because you get out there, you get out there and you get caught up with certain things, then you're going to be too far for me to even get you. Ooh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Because he saw me going out too far, drifting too far from the boat of life, drifting too far from salvation, drifting too far from the life after death with him. That he started rolling me back and they're going to top it for me to preach whenever I start preaching again. Rolling back in. Lord have mercy. So, that's what they concerned themselves with, with me. And that's what kept me coming back, getting saved again. No matter how much I backslidden, that's what kept me coming back, getting saved. That, that, that love of God that they implanted in me. 
So even though they are gone, I kept coming. Even though the church no longer felt like home anymore, I kept going, kept coming. I kept coming. So now to go on down, I answer that, the church feel like home. No. Does it feel different? Yes, it does feel different. And the difference is, now that Pastor Glove is the last person gone, I, what I feel the difference is, is that my dependence, not spiritual dependence, but my dependence was on her. And what do I mean? I mean, so I like to explain myself so people can understand what I'm saying. My dependence on her was how she loved me. I felt she didn't, but I knew she did in her way. So when I was younger, it was all about, oh, she don't love me. She don't love me. But as I got older and matured in love of God, I found out God revealed to me and let me see that everybody loves somebody. But they love how they love. And me as an individual cannot blame them and hold it against them because of how they love me. And that cannot affect me of how I should love them. So, that was the difference. That's the difference that I felt now that she's gone. That she loved me how she loved me. And through the years, I was looking for her love on how I expected it to be, how I saw it to be, how I thought it to be. But when I started accepting it, how it was supposed to be, then everything ran smoothly. There was no more issues. There was no more problems. There was no more nothing there. See, I, I can never have hatred for somebody or hate somebody, right? For what they do or don't do to me or for me. But what, what it will be will be hurt. And God let me see that the hurt that I feel based on what people said, did, or act towards me is based on how I looked at it. That's when hurt step in. When you start looking at it from your point of view, from your perspective. But when you turn it around and see it from the other person's perspective, then you'll be able to deal with them. You'll be able to tolerate them. You'll be able to understand them. And you'll go on just like nothing happened. I had somebody say to me, Dad, Sister Jordan, how you do it? How you do it? And you still doing it. You just keep going and keep going like, like, like you just keep going for more. Like, I'm doing something. Who's that coming in my room? I don't know why I want to say nothing. That really gets me. But anyway. So, I, um, see that now. So that's the difference. That's the difference of it now, you know? These are things, there's a lot of things that I see and a lot of things that I understand now. Unfortunately, now that Pastor Glover is gone, you see what I'm saying? She truly was a woman of God. No lie. And I didn't doubt it. Other people doubted it. Other people talked about her. Other people said she wasn't saved. But God let me know she was saved. Mm -hmm. Let me know she was saved. And everything that went about in reference to, in reference to her 
was in his plan. Everybody may sit back and think, oh, I had something to do with it. Or even maybe it was wrong or whatever the case, but it was all in God's plan because God What? What you want? I just want the stable run. The who? The stable run. Come on. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You ain't hear me answer? You ain't hear me say something? No. I heard, I said, who's that messing with the door? No, I didn't hear you. Okay. I was just, you know, just taking the, the um, this cord and putting it in my cord to use it with my PlayStation. Okay. Go ahead. So, um, hold This is why I like my coming they kind of distract me. You know me. I got ADHD. I be forgetting where I am. So anyway. So that's the difference. That's, that's that. As I was saying, Pastor Glover was a woman of God. And there was things that went down that I now understand. And I had a dream before she left this world. Could have been a year or two before she died. And the Lord let me see. And in the dream, I was saying, ah, he let me see and understand that some of her actions, that was the reason. In the dream, he was telling me, that was the reason. And there is a lot of things that's opening up now that's helping me to understand. And see, this is what's keeping me going forward, right? Will you still be going as often as you did before? Now, I'm still going as often as I did before. Mm, should I say often? Wednesday, Friday. Okay, so I'm going to put it like this. No, I'm not going as often as I did before she died. Right? Well, I'm be honest with you. Before she died, I think three months she was out, man. I think maybe... Maybe the beginning of this year, I started slowing up and going to church. Started slowing up and going to church. I did. I ain't gonna lie. Now, before she died, she had said something to me. And she, in, in what she was telling me, she was putting me in a position, right? And she was telling me that in order for me to be in that position, I had to come to church. And I'm glad she got to see it. She got to see it because me starting to go to church and be in the church and being on time, et cetera, et cetera, it took me to another place in the church, right? I was already in the place in God. It took me to another place in the church while she was still alive. You notice that when she died, everything went, went left field, right? But she did what God told her to do. And she said to me what God wanted me to do. She didn't say what God told me to tell you this. No, she didn't say it. But I could tell what she was saying is what she wanted. And it was a fact to her. So therefore, I respected her fact and did what she said. So I was coming to church on time. I want you to understand I ain't got time for no foolishness. So, I did come to Sunday school, but I, did, I wasn't there for the beginning when it first started. But I did make it for some Sunday schools. But I was always there before service started. Sometimes I was on the pulpit before the leaders got up there. And she would come up smiling. Unfortunately, I can't tell her that I saw her smiling because what it was that she was telling me Whatever it was that she was telling me I was to do, she didn't get to place me there. But, and I, so I can't tell her, like, yeah, I, I listened, I saw you smile. And she was happy that I was doing such. To the point where she would ask me to bring the word for her. Like, she had a Sunday where she had to preach. She would come to me and ask me to preach. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to do it. Not anything of, of something I didn't do. But she believed in me. And that's what mattered. That's what counts. 
when people believe in you and believe that you can do things. See, people won't never understand what you're going through or what you've been through, you know, unless they take the time to get to know you. They may not uh, 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 really know what it is you're going through because maybe they have not experienced it, but they will never know what you went through or what you're going through if they don't take the time to find out. Jesus didn't place people in positions without having chats with them, without having talks with them. He took out time to feel the people, to have compassion on the people, even if they was wrong. It's like I said, he knew that Peter was going to deny him. And he knew that Judas was going to betray him. But he didn't use it against them. He didn't go in the crivers of the, of the walls and talk to his disciples and, and his best disciples, Peter, James, and John, and tell them, yo, Judas is going to do this. This is what's going to happen. He told them about he was going to die. But he didn't say anything. Hey, this just came to me. He didn't say anything about his betrayal by one of them until then. Until then. He didn't say nothing. He didn't indicate to none of his disciples that somebody in the bunch was going to betray him. But we as human beings, we as feeling something or knowing something, even if God tells us something, we start acting indifferent to the person because we know more than them. But that's not what God wants us to do. When God tells us things about people, if it just so happens, because people have a tendency of saying, oh, God tells us things and he don't want us to tell it. Okay, okay. I know he, he don't ever tell me that. Because if you ever tell me something, tell somebody. Show me something about somebody. He'll let you know in the dream or when he speaks to you whether or not to tell him. Now, if he tells you that, okay, but you don't use what he's told you against them. You don't put them in hell if God didn't. You don't put them in the hospital to die if God didn't. And even if they are in the hospital, even if they are dying, you don't kill them and, and throw them to the wolves if God didn't. If anything, you praying as God. Can you change your mind about this situation like Hezekiah did? Turn his back to the wall. A face to the wall was a face to the wall and started praying. And God gave him 15 more years. Sincerity of the heart. That's where it comes in when you say God looks at the heart. So. It feels different. And it really feels different more so that she's gone now. Now, when Bishop Mingle died, I came back into the church after she died and got saved. Now, I can't really tell you too much of what I felt at, back at that time because I was just a young girl. Right, I was married, so and everything. But I was going through my own things at the time to really focus on her death, right? And I missed her. Yeah, I grieve. I, I'm an inverted griever. I grieve inside. You won't see how I feel about situations, especially people dying, because it's in me. If I, if if you didn't see me showing it, then I'm not gonna be showing it now you see what i'm saying but if you just so happen to see me show love to a person and then that person died i don't have to show you nothing because you already know how i feel you already know oh she really take she really gonna take it hard because i know how she felt about that person but if the per if if you have not seen me showing too much affection and something happens to the person you won't know but just because I didn't show it to you doesn't mean that I don't feel nothing for the person. But see, 
that's why it feels different because see god let me know that pastor glover he allowed pastor glover to feel my love for her to know my love for her now i don't know what came out of her mouth i don't know what was said to other people if anything was said you see what i'm saying and maybe people want me to believe that she didn't love me or whatever but you know regardless of what was done or said the lord let me know why it was done and said so i i I ain't one for holding grudges. And I didn't even hold grudges when people be alive. But when God explained things to me and let me see things and let me see which, why? You may say, well, why he didn't show you why he was alive? Because it wasn't, wasn't meant for me to know it then. Because maybe if I knew it then, I would have been showing pity. You know what I'm saying? Who's to say? Maybe I would have got a big head if I didn't knew what was really going on. And then when certain things happen, <clears throat> I find myself saying off the wall stuff like I hear some people say. So I'm glad, I'm so glad that God controls me. And I allow him to control me. Because I sit back and I look and I think and I say, if God did not control me, just think of how I would have responded and act to certain situations. And what the outcome would have came for me if I was controlling myself. I thank God for the fastest he made me go on. He took me on a 40-day fast, not a 40 night, a 40, not a 40 day and 40 night, a 40 day fast. And I went through it. And it wasn't until the last three days of that fast that I began to feel the connection and the power. See, I learned from that time that if he had a cane when I started fasting, then I would have stopped my fast before 40 days. But he wanted me to see, he wanted to see if I was going to be obedient, number one, because he told me if I'd be obedient, he'll bless me. Number two, he wanted to see whether I was going to depend on him. A 40-day fast? Think about it. Imagine if night hadn't been all added. That's, that's not eating for 40 days. So, my 40 days were not eating within the day. That's it. I didn't miss a day from eating. He told me exactly what to eat. He put me the time. And each day, I fast the same time every day. Went off the fast the same time. Ate my food the same time. Went to sleep the same time. Even if I didn't go to sleep at the same time. When I woke up, I woke up to fast at the same time. So the last three days of that fast, I started feeling, feeling the power of God, feeling the difference in me. My mind, oh my God, it felt like my mind was empty. It's hard to explain unless you went through. It felt like there was nothing there. And this, all these different, I pick up the word and read, it just was going in my head. Uh, that mean this, that mean this, that mean this, that mean this. Soon as I got on my knees and started praying, the Lord was meeting me there. I was speaking in tongues. Three days into the at the end of the fast. And the last day, I said, Lord, this is something. He came and showered on me. And I got up walking in newness of life. Now I didn't know why he took me on that. I was like, wait a minute, I was like that. And I was saved. I wasn't really going through so much then. I had just came back into the church. Right? And I'm doing my thing. I'm in the choir. I have no issues. No problems. I mean, just the normal stuff. Nothing to cry about. But I kept on living. Oh, yes, I did. I kept on giving. 
I kept on going. And that's when that 40-day 40, 40 fast came into effect. Then he would lead me into weeks of fast. Then he would lead me into two or three days of fast. Sometimes I could be just sitting here and he'll tell me fast. I'd be like, okay. Um, he, he wouldn't tell me right there and then. He'd tell me to fast, but it's not for right then. It's for whenever he tell me, whenever he lead me to go into the fast. Sometimes I'll be coming from church and I'll be talking to somebody and I'll be telling them, I say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going on the fast. So the Lord leading me to fast, so I'm going to go fast. And I used to try to get people to go along with me. Get this particular person to go along with me. Fast with me. I said, I'm going on with the fast. Fast with me. See, and I realized as time went on, even up to the present time, that the Lord was doing that to put me in a place so I'll be able to let people know what he's saying. You see what I'm saying? Because I couldn't go telling what God said and it don't come to pass. And that makes me what a false prophet. And I'm not saying I'm a prophet. A liar. I'm put it that way. But biblical terms is a false prophet. So I had to get to the place of obedience. I had to get to the place of God being able to talk to me. And I listen. And then I get up and do what he say. Whether it's to be quiet or whether it's to talk. And he had to take me down into the deep valley of shutting up. <laughs> I tell you no lie. Now this, let, let me stop this because this is this this is probably going to be should be a part of my uh, my self security. So I'm, I'm gonna stop here. Let me go back to what you said. It said, "Will you still be going as often as you did before?" I'm going now. I started back because as I was saying that before Pastor Glover passed away, before when when Pastor Glover stopped coming to church, I mean really stopped coming, I stopped. I stopped. And I'm gonna tell you what made me stop. What made me stop is because when she gotten sick and went to the hospital, individuals wouldn't tell me what was going on. Now I took it personally because I was an aunt. Now when I thought about it after the fact she dead and buried, maybe the people did not know that she was my aunt. But there was people that did know that she was my aunt. And they threw up that it was by marriage. And I had to, to correct that and let them know I don't care whether it was about marriage or not, the fact was when she left this world, she was a Glover. She didn't go back to her to her maiden name. I know her married, maiden name. I don't know what anybody else know. And if you do, hip hip hooray for you. But I did not, she did not go back to her marriage name. I mean, to her maiden name. She stayed that marriage name. So I felt as long as she was that married name, and even if she had a went back, but let me just say it like this. As long as she was that married name, she was my aunt. If she had went back to her maiden name, she was still my aunt. You see what I'm saying? saying? But because of what was going on with whatever was going on in people's minds, that's what caused me to slow up. And going to church. Now she she ain't dead yet. I said, I ain't going to church. Nobody don't want to tell me nothing. I ain't going to that church to see her. Because I, where I was sitting at on the pulpit was right next to her almost. And what had happened, the seat that I was sitting in, there was a seat between the both of us. And I always wanted to sit in that seat. But I noticed that when she would come, even when I before I was on the pulpit, that's where she would put her bag at. And her other belongings and stuff like that. So I just automatically went to that next seat. But then, <laughs> God know how to do things. The 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 roof. I guess the roof of our church. And anybody is a roof fixer, and live in New York City. Anywhere near Brooklyn, our roof needs to be fixed. If anybody can do it, 
We are a small church. We don't have a lot of money, but it would be real nice if, if you could do it. If the God leads you to come and do it, it would be most appreciative. You know, I would appreciate it. I'm sure my bishop and those that's on the pulpit. But here's the thing. The chair that I would sit in, the water would leak right there. And the first time I went up there, after we had a bad storm, I sat in the chair. And I sat and I jumped up. I said, oh, this chair is wet. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be very honest with you. I was thinking. Now, we all know that was the devil, right? Let me tell you what I was thinking so you know it's the devil. Because nobody in the Holy Ghost right mind would do such a thing. So, therefore, me and my Holy Ghost mind shouldn't have been thinking it. But this is a prime example of how the devil can put things in your mind against people. I'm sitting down. I'm, I sat down. I said, who in the crazy put this water in this seat? Oh, they didn't want me up here? So they gonna put some water in here? But I was thinking that they was washing the seats, right? But then I'm looking at everybody else, they sitting in their seat. No, this is done purposely. Y'all didn't want me on this pulpit, so that's why you put this water in my chair. Now I can say, this is a this is a prime example of where you use the phrase, the devil is a liar. Because he was lying. He was telling a bold-faced lie to my face in my mind. So, I just played the wolf. What I did, I went and got some, some, we have sheets that we would use to cover people that's on the altar or fall out or whatever. So, I went and got one of those sheets and spread it out and put it on a chair and sat down. So, it wasn't that wet because I was able to sit in the chair. So the next time it happened, you know, I, I didn't I didn't phantom that because I now mind you, I didn't get that thought out of my head. So when it happened, let me let me say it right. When it happened again, I was thinking the same thing, but this time Pastor Glover was there. So this is what caused me to sit next to her in that chair. Because she wasn't up there yet. She was downstairs. This is before she stopped coming, but she was sick. So, I moved over into that chair, and I put my stuff, I think, on the floor. I put the, 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 the sheet on there, so again, because I was trying to sit in it, but I did go and sit in it, and but then when I felt the back of my skirt, it was communion, I felt the back of my skirt, it was wet, so I really didn't know whether that was staying. You know how it is with something wet on white? So, I was like, um... I don't know. Let me let me move over. So when she came upstairs, she saw me sitting there. So it wasn't no funny look or nothing. I just said to myself, I said, well, let me let me, let me tell her why I'm sitting over here. You know, because I am blocking her personal space. I am in her personal space. Right? So when she sat down, I said, oh, she said, praise the Lord. I helped her up. You know, I took her bag and stuff like that. So then... When she sat down, I told her, I said, I'm sorry if I'm sitting here. I said, but the chair was wet. She said, the chair is wet. I said, yes. I said, um, it happened before. She said, it did? She said, well, I wish I have knew that. I said, yeah. I said, but it's real wet. So before I could sit, I put the sheet. But now it's like really wet. She said, hmm. She said, is that, um, is that, that, um, roof, right? I got to tell Bishop about that, right? So now, that caused me to sit next to her. So, that first Sunday, she was there, but she never came She never came back to church after that. So, there was like about, there was maybe about three months of communion without her. Right? So, I wasn't taken out of the, out of the, pulpit until after she died but all that time that she was not coming to church i wasn't coming i was coming only on sunday hoping to see her i was texting her telling her during the week you know whatever it is i can't make it out of however it is but she would text me back and say neither am i and i would say to myself oh, 
but I don't feel bad. My past ain't going. I ain't going neither. And sometimes I would just text, let me see your past go. Grandma going to church. But I wouldn't say, are you going? Well, my, my grandmother used to say to me when I first got saved, and she was up in age and couldn't come to church, but I didn't know what was going on with her neither. She would text me, she'd say, are you going? Are you getting laugh? Right? So she would call me. And she'd be like, are you going? You're going? Are you getting left? And I would tell her whether I'm, I'm going to church. She said, all right. Sometimes she would say, I'm going. Sometimes she would say, I'm going to get left. And I'd be feeling like, oh, man, I should have let her answer first. <laughs> so I can get left, too. But um, I would text her, right? Tell her, because Patrick was a texter with me. Maybe other people she called, but me and her would text. So I would text her. And, you know, I would tell her um, that um, I won't be coming out, whatever, whether it's with my husband. Or sometimes I'll be out and I know I got to stop off home first. I ain't going to make it. And she would text back and say, I ain't going out neither. I'll be like, I don't know. And then sometimes when I don't want to go, right, because I feel like she ain't going to be there. And a lot of da dun da that's happening, I'll be like, hmm, let me see, how can I get her to tell me she ain't going to church? So I text and I'll be like, well, um, I'm just calling to see how you feeling. Pray God you feeling good, you know, but if you tired, whatever, you rest and don't come out tonight. It may be like sometimes five minutes, ten minutes, sometimes two hours. And I got so I better text her early enough. So if she say not to go, I won't be on the train going. <laughs> So I would text her and she would answer back in the time span that she answered and she'd be like, Yes, I'm feeling better on how it is, whatever she says. Then no, I'm not going out tonight. And I'd be like, eh, Neither am I. <laughs> Maybe it was wrong with me, but it just didn't feel the same with her not there. See, in the beginning it was okay. And when I say okay, because in my head I'm saying to myself, she'll be back. She just resting. She got a bad cold or something like that. So I'd be good with that. But then as time went on and, you know, I was feeling it in my spirit that it seemed like she ain't coming back. I was already beginning to grieve. Even before she left here, I was grieving. Since January of this year, way before this, way before it actually came vivid that she was sick, I was already feeling all of this. This is why I say I understand it now. I don't know some of my videos I have where this feeling, I don't know what's going on with this feeling. And now I see why I had those feelings because they was mixed feelings. That's why I kept saying, I don't understand why, what is going on? Why am I feeling, say, and I would say, it's not so much as, something going to happen within my immediate family, but it's going to be somebody I know. I mean, check them videos out. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. Had no idea it had anything to do with my aunt. Had no idea it had anything to do with my pastor. Had no idea it was going to be what it is now. But just like I said, and I told somebody, God knew. So he was preparing me. He was warning me. That's what that 40-day fast was for. All the stuff I had to go through up until today. And I'm sure it's going to take me through years to come. But you, you go through things. No, let me put it like this. The Lord tell you to do things and you don't know why you're doing it, right? It's not for the error you in. You see what I'm saying? It's not for that particular moment. David was, was, was ordained to be a king, what, I believe when he was 13 or 15 years old, but he didn't become king until he was in his 30s. So if he was 15, a decade later, decade and a half, no, decade later, that's when he became king. So that 40-day fast that I, that God put me on when I, First came back in the church, and I ain't talking about when Bishop Mingo died. I'm talking about came back in the church and stayed in the church because he took me through that. And you see, 
Let me finish that. He took me through that 30 days fast before, I mean, when I came back in to stay. He didn't take me through that fast. I was going in and out and in and out and in and out. No, when I made up my mind, and God knew my mind was made up. And he also, and I knew that certain things happen quickly and I'll be gone. But God knew I wasn't going nowhere. So to make me stable for certain things that was going to come my way in years to come, he took me through the fast. And that fast helped me to get through all those different segments. Here I, back, here I am back telling about my security. So let me not talk it. I done told you some of it. So now um, maybe I could take these clips out. And put them in the video. In that video. Maybe it's all right. Okay. So, um. Whew. I would have to learn how to do that one. Uh, but I'm going to try that. I'm going to see if I can do it. But anyway. So now. That's where. Me not going as often as I did before. Now, now. My mind is to go. But it's hard to go. Because ain't nobody coming to church. I mean, nobody really was coming during that time. Pastor Glover was alive. But, you know, being that she was, you know, she was the leader, per se. And she would let us know when it's service, when it's not service. That allowed people to come to church at a reasonable, at reasonable times. Be online at reasonable times. You know what I'm saying? Because we know there's service or we know it's not service. But now... It seems like people is less interested now. And I think it got something to do with Pastor Glover being cool. This is just my thought. So that's the difference as well. Is it do, does it feel different? That's the difference as well. It seems like people ain't all that enthused no more. I mean, we can, we can say that, you know, they wasn't showing enthused in God that much or whatever. But they were still coming to church. But it's like now the spirit that the spirit of coming to church is like gone. See now, yes, I I I I still want to go to church. I still want to go as often as I as I've been doing before Pastor Glover died. I mean, way before I stopped going before she died. But now it's like a struggle because I've been a couple of times and nobody was there. Soaked to the bone, pros to the bone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I still opened the door. I still had my devotional. Still had my, my prayer. Okay, what was the name? Will you still? Yeah. What will happen to you as being an assistant pastor? So I answered that in the last one. So I answered it. Um, it has not come to me as being an assistant pastor. Maybe in some prior videos I may have talked about it per se. But... Not as far as it being directed at me. So. As far as, I guess, oh, this is one month ago. I'm trying to think if this was given to me before Pastor Glover died. Yeah, in July. So this is June. Pastor Glover died in May. So I'm not sure whether this was, it says a month ago, so that would be June. So Pastor Glover was dead already. But just in case it was written last month, then that would have been May, right? So that could be it, because we're in July. So it could have been written in June. Whatever. Because <laughs> I'm confused with myself right now. But anyway, in answer to it, maybe if it was like in May or April or something like that, maybe I could have been, answered it. And my answer would have still been, I don't know. Because it's not so much as it being presented to me, which it was presented to me. So let me just let me just say the truth of the matter. It was presented to me. But just as quick as it was presented to me, it was taken from me. And not so as saying that I was the assistant pass or whatever, but you know. Well, I'll answer the question as the question is said. 
what will happen to you being an assistant pastor. So as an assistant pastor, if I was to have been an assistant pastor, I would have most likely and tried my best to do, follow the things that Pastor Glover did to perfect it. I, I, I'm not going to take away what she is or who she is or what she done. Whatever it was that she was doing, like she was the one that were letting people know that that um when it's service and, not, and when it's not service and you know et cetera et cetera that the only difference I would have did with that as an assistant pastor I would have put it on somebody else because I think that kind of like overwhelmed her at times especially as she got down to where she didn't need to be doing that. Uh, as far as like how she assigned people to do things and then like be in it, I think that overwhelmed her as well. So me as assistant pastor, I would assign people to do things and they would do. And if they come to me talking about, well, you didn't say this, you didn't have no meeting. No, I will get them to understand that I assigned you to that. The only thing you do is come to me when it's done. This is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. This is who I got. And I have confidence enough in you to do the job that I put you to do with God's help. Because I believe that you're going to God. Because if you're not going to God, God's going to let me know you ain't going to him. Because I'm going to see the outcome. Because God don't make no mistake and he's not a God of confusion. So I'm going to leave it to you and let you do your job. And then if there's any opinion or anything I need to teach you, then I will do so. But if not, that's it. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you in front of you and in front of the congregation. Okay. So that those, those and other things, you know, that maybe Pastor Glover was doing that overwhelmed her. If it was to be my job. I, if it's to be assigned to other people, I'm going to assign it to other people. I'm going to allow everyone in the church to do something. Save or unsaved. Because there's a job for the unsaved as well. That's where that verse comes. Whatever you find your hands to do, you do it. Right? And I don't want to too much quote that because I have not looked up the verse right now to see if that's exactly what it says. So, Y'all can look it up. And if I'm wrong, you can write it in the comments exactly how it's said. But whoever is in the church, and the Lord has already instructed me of what they can do or should do, that's what I'm going to tell them to do. And I'm going to always say, the Lord put it in my spirit, or the Lord said this, I'm never going to put nobody in nothing based on my feelings even if i think you could sing i'm not gonna say you be the service leader because just the time i put you up there you make a mess so if no matter how good you sing i'm gonna go to god god do you think sister john should be up there leading the service you put in my spirit no oh uh, not yet yeah I, i'm, I'm well, well, what you want, what what you want her to do, Lord, or him to do? You see, because my vision of the church is God's vision, not mine's. So let's say, for instance, I do have some vision or some thought. I'm gonna even say vision because that vision belongs to God. But if I have some thought for the vision, I'm gonna ask God. My teeth loosen up. Hold on. Swallowing a lot now. I'm gonna ask God. And let God tell me what, what I'm to do with the congregation, each individual in the congregation, to help fulfill his vision. And if we read in the word, we see God told everybody that was over anybody what to tell them. So it's no different with me or the next person. So... So that's what would happen to me. 
as being an assistant pastor. Because actually, the way you and what will happen to you? Well, I really don't know what will happen to me. Hopefully, people will accept me if I were to be that title. You know what I'm saying? But as far as what I would do as an assistant pastor, that's what I would do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm about the congregation. I'm about the souls. We on these days, we go to church when we do go. Now there's only Sunday and Wednesday. Apparently, Fridays is out of the picture. But that Friday, I'm going to do something with that Friday. Pastor Glover had it evangelistic. So that falls under the category of the evangelist. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab this evangelist and this evangelist and this evangelist. Because we, we only got one right now. So I'm gonna grab that person. When I say one, I don't mean my including I don't mean myself. I mean there's only one because I was uh, but I'm gonna take that evangelist and we're gonna go into a meeting, whether it's over the phone or whether it's face to face. I believe in calling people. I can talk to I like to talk face to face. I have a Zoom meeting. People don't like the Zoom. People don't want to get on. What they scared of? They scared of how they look? Fix yourself up. I'm scared of how I look, but you see, I put my little eyebrow, got my little hair on. You see what I'm saying? But that's 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 a whole nother color. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna conversate with that evangelist. What would you like to do? Cause the Lord showed me people in the church. He didn't too much show me what they was doing, but he showed. I mean. He didn't show me what it was that he wanted them to do, but he did show me what they was doing. Now, he did show me that. So now, even out of that concept, even if he didn't show nothing, I would still have conversation with the person. Okay, I believe you can do this. Do you think you can do it? Not so much as what I want them to do. Not as not not so much as what I want them to do. It's what God want them to do. And me letting them know what I think about what God want them to do. Do it. Okay, I think you can do it. I understand this situation with you and that situation with you. So okay, do it at your pace. Do it when you can. Every once a once a month we'll come together. Not a meeting. I ain't talking about no church meeting. Once a month, me and that person will come together. And they'll let me know where I will individually have meetings with, with my congregation. I will individually have chats with them. Not o not only not only in person over the phone too. If there is a counselor within the church. I will put aside one day of the month with that counselor to get their opinion of what they see in the church. Right? And then whatever they see, we will bring it to the attention of the individuals. Not in a whole big old meeting of everybody. No, if it's this particular individual that the council see issues with, we'll bring that person together with the counselor. Now, mind you, everybody already know they're a counselor. I'm not keeping her or him in a closet somewhere. They, they come to church and they come to church all the time. And everybody, who's this person? Assistant Pastor Jordan ain't saying nothing. No, I, I'm going to have a church meeting and introduce this person to the church. And say, this person is this particular person. They got their degree in this person and this particular thing. And they are here to talk to. If you feel like you want to come to me first before you go to them, fine. If not, you're free to do so. I will let the person know you can always use my office. We got enough offices in the church. Offices, not officers. Okay. Let me make it clear. Hopefully my teeth in my mouth is helping me to talk a little bit clearer. 
So, in answer to that, I've been talking almost an hour. So I hope I, I hope I um, answered all the questions. You know, hope I answered all the questions in reference to the key members of the church are gone, such as pastor, grandmother, aunt, and Bishop Mingo. Does the church feel like home to me anymore? Does it feel different? Will I still be going as often as I did before? And what will happen to me being an assistant pastor? So I hope I covered all that and I appreciate all of those who come past my video. And this is to, oh, this one is at Vita, at Vita4442. So I got to make sure I put the response, the title, that person's name. So they'll know that I respond to. Thanks a lot for your questions. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time coming on my channel and listening to my videos. And I hope that if not all my videos, if not a few of my videos, if not some of my videos, but hopefully one of my videos have did some justice for you. And I appreciate you. And if you're not a subscriber, I would appreciate it if you cared to subscribe to my channel. If not, it's okay. It's all right. I hold no bad feelings against you. I love you, whoever you are. I love you for who you are. I love you for your questions. I love you for, for who you are. And if you are a saved Holy Ghost filled person, hey. We know who Jesus is. And we know in whom we believe. So may God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Bye.